This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer the question, is Satoshi a threat to Bitcoin? In particular, if Satoshi were to return and sell his coins or move his coins, would this be a big problem for Bitcoin? This is the question that comes out of my video from Saturday, which was called How to Create the Next Bitcoin. And the whole point of that exercise was to show how Bitcoin was this really amazing historical accident and how it's almost impossible to recreate it. As part of that, I got a great question from Critical Thinking Skills, a great comment saying, Hi, Matt, longtime subscriber and fan of your channel. Could you please explain in another video how Satoshi owning a million Bitcoins isn't a, is not a catastrophe waiting to happen? I know that's roughly only 5%, roughly, of the total float that will ever be. However, this is an insider owning a lot of Bitcoin. He would own roughly 6% of global wealth if Bitcoin is ever adopted as the global currency. So I think this is a great question. We all know that Satoshi controlled approximately a million Bitcoin, and I'm going to talk about why we have that estimate. There's no such thing as a single Satoshi wallet. There are only early Bitcoin addresses that may belong or may have belonged to Satoshi. They're not all put together in a single wallet, for example, controlled by a single key or a single hardware wallet or something like that, which didn't even exist. And, we, and when we say that these early Bitcoin addresses and the Bitcoin belongs to Satoshi, what we mean is that he used to control or still controls the private keys to those addresses. And so he can move the coins, he can send the coins, he can sell the coins if he wants to, assuming he's still alive and still possesses those private keys. Now, a million Bitcoin is a rough estimate of the amount of Bitcoin that are in these addresses controlled by Satoshi. And the only reason Satoshi ended up with these coins was from earning minor rewards when he was the only one or one of the only ones mining Bitcoin in the early days to secure the network. Presumably he was mining Bitcoin on his laptop back when it was still possible to run the proof of work algorithm using a CPU. Now a million Bitcoin out of 21 million max supply, that's about 5%, 4.76%. It's important to remember that Satoshi has never moved or sold his coins. Apart from a very brief test very early on, I believe in 2009 or 2010, where Satoshi sent Hal Finney 10 Bitcoin. And Hal Finney tells us this in Bitcoin talk forum. He says, I was the recipient of the first Bitcoin transaction when Satoshi sent 10 coins to me as a test. You can read about this, um, Hal Finney's post here back from 2013. And it's quite fascinating. This whole Bitcoin talk forum has a lot of very, very interesting material. So I encourage you to check it out. Now, here's what usually happens in practice when it comes to Satoshi FUD saying, someone says, I'm not going to buy Bitcoin because Satoshi might come back and dump on me. And then what usually happens, in my experience at least, is that person goes right out and buys some ETH and some Litecoin and some Solana instead. Now, Satoshi has never dumped on anyone, but people are happy to buy cryptos where there have been dumps by founders. Vitalik has dumped 25% of his coins on you guys. Litecoin founder Charles Lee, Charlie Lee sold all of his coins in December of 2017. And I made this video back when Solana was in the process of peaking back in November of 2021, talking about um, displaying some video where some of the Solana billionaire VCs were laughing about how they're going to dump on everyone. And we can see by the price that this has almost certainly come to be true. So this is the strange thing. Worrying about Satoshi is not a reason to buy something, uh, to buy a much, much weaker coin that has founders that are still alive that have a huge interest in dumping on you. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button, share this video with a few friends as well. So are Satoshi's holdings of this million or 1.1 million Bitcoin, a giant overhang and a threat to Bitcoin. I would say at a basic level, probably not. We have people like Chamath who own, or at least owned about a million Bitcoin. No one ever talks about him dumping or worrying about that. I do vaguely remember Chamath saying in an interview from 2020, I believe, uh, that he loaned out his, his Bitcoin to GBTC but I can't find anything about that today, so don't quote me on it. So I, I'm not sure, maybe some of you know whether Chamath has made it public, whether he still owns and controls his Bitcoin. But at a very basic level, Bitcoin is liquid enough now to easily absorb 1 million Bitcoin being sold. And the right way to sell a million coins, just like the right way to sell a large block of stock or anything else that's, that's quite large relative to the market, even if it's only about 5%, the right way is to trickle them out slowly over time. If you place a market order and dump a million coins, 
that would achieve a really bad execution price, for which presumably the person exiting would not want. And you would also just get this quick sp spike down, probably followed by a rally right back up to current prices. Now that's talking about just someone having to sell a million coins, maybe someone like Chamath. Does holding a million Bitcoin, as Satoshi may still do and may still control, does this give you any additional control over the protocol? No, fortunately it does not because Bitcoin is proof of work. Now we have to ask the question, does holding a million ETH or a million Cardano give you any additional control over the protocol? Yes, it definitely does because those are both proof of stake now. ETH transitioned to proof of stake during the merge a couple weeks back. And under proof of stake, holding more coins gives you more control over the protocol since you can stake them and thus get to validate more blocks, choose what transactions get included or don't included in them. So you have a lot of quote unquote voting power with proof of stake, which you really don't have with proof of work. Owning a lot of Bitcoin does not give you any advantage as a Bitcoin miner. Yes, you might be rich. You can always sell off some Bitcoin and buy lots of mining machines, mining machines, but who really cares? Because you cannot change Bitcoin unless you can get all the nodes around the world to run your new changed software. So this is the beautiful thing about proof of work. It would not even give Satoshi an advantage. He would have to mine along with everyone else. And he would have to follow the consensus rules or his blocks would not be accepted. This is what the full nodes look like, at least the reachable full nodes. They're all around the world. This is what makes Bitcoin a very decentralized coin. So having a million Bitcoin in itself is not a huge threat. If you look it up, that's about one day's worth of Bitcoin trading volume, average trading volume. So the market would be able to absorb it. And holding that, that much Bitcoin, as we just said, does not in itself give you any extra control over the protocol since Bitcoin is not proof of stake. But here's the thing, here's the crux of the matter. Satoshi is not just another large holder of Bitcoin like Chamath or the Winkle Voss, the Winkle Vi twins. Satoshi is a legendary, almost mythical figure at this point. And his lack of ego and his willingness to leave the project early on is one major reason that Bitcoin has remained so neutral and decentralized. There's no Vitalik, there's no Charles Hoskinson to screw things up. There's no visible founder who can be bribed or extorted or tortured. There's no single point of failure in this way. Now, if Satoshi came back and started selling, most people would assume the worst. And it's for a very good reason, because insiders and founders usually know a lot more about what's really going on. Now, this is normally at a corporation where not everything is quite as transparent as Bitcoin. But this is why, for example, the SEC only lets insiders and founders sell their stock with certain having made certain announcements during certain time windows right after earnings reports, for example. And that's because insiders and founders possess, possess what you might call information asymmetry. So when Steve Jobs or Elon sell some stock, you can't help but wonder if they know something that the average person does not. So if Satoshi came back and were selling, I would definitely not be a happy camper for this reason. But there's even more. What if Satoshi comes back and we learn that he votes Republican, he votes Democrat, he's a vegan, he's a very aggressive carnivore, he's Russian or Chinese or Iranian, and I pick those three groups as sort of official enemies of the US government, not necessarily of the US people. What if he's American and you don't like Americans? What if he doesn't like certain ethnic groups or genders or races? What if he wants to overthrow the US government? The nice thing right now about Satoshi is that he's pretty much a blank, a blank slate. You can project what you want onto him. He definitely seems to have leaned anarchist or libertarian or something like this, but you cannot be sure. We don't even know if it's a he or a she or a they. No one knows. And I hope it stays that way. If Satoshi comes back and moves even one sat, I think that's a huge problem actually. All of a sudden you have a founder who's back and will have the ability to wield the bully pulpit like someone like Charles Hoskinson or Vitalik. And if Satoshi says that he wants bigger blocks or confidential transactions or something else, who's going to oppose him? I think a lot of toxic maxis well, but probably not a majority of Bitcoiners, unfortunately. If Satoshi returned and started telling me which version of Bitcoin software to run, here's what I would tell him. I would actually tell him to go to hell, especially if it included major changes to the protocol, like changing the halving schedule, the max supply, etc. And this is because Bitcoin is so much bigger than a single human being at this point. There's this famous uh, koan or Buddhist saying, if you meet the Buddha on the road, kill him. And I want the YouTube algo to please understand that this is a metaphorical statement. I'm not suggesting that anyone should kill anyone, 
but you could create a version of this that says something like, if you meet Satoshi on the road, tell him to F off. So I hope, I really, really hope that Satoshi never returns. Bitcoin is this beautiful, neutral money. It's a pure digital commodity at this point. It's reached escape velocity and will never need a leader. Does gold need a leader? Does electricity need a leader? Do we need to consult the inventor of the wheel before using it? Absolutely not. And Bitcoin is that rare historical accident in the, in the history of money. They can really never be repeated. And the genius of, of Satoshi was twofold. He invented this weird protocol and then he left forever. So I personally don't think we'll ever find Satoshi or that he, she, or they will ever come back. I'd assign a maybe half a percentage, a half a percentage point probability at most, but I think it's definitely a risk factor. And it's interesting to see that MicroStrategy does list this as a risk factor, as a, a threat to the price of Bitcoin and its volatility. And it says here that the identification of Satoshi Nakamoto, the pseudonymous person or persons who developed Bitcoin, or the transfer of Satoshi's Bitcoin. Now, of course, when you're writing these risk sheets for the SEC, you want to include everything uh, but the kitchen sink, maybe even the kitchen sink. But it's still interesting that this is included in MicroStrategy's 10K from February of 2022. So should you avoid buying Bitcoin because Satoshi might return? I personally don't think so, but I do think that's a personal decision that only you can make. It's certainly not a reason though to buy any other crypto in existence, no matter what those crypto grifters might tell you. If you really think Satoshi might return, especially if he might return soon, don't buy Bitcoin. You should buy something else that's scarce instead, like scarce real estate, lakefront, riverfront, beachfront, special climate, special views, something that makes it rare and distinctive. The only problem, real estate is still inferior to Bitcoin. It has much worse property rights. It can easily be seized or attacked. It cannot be packed up and taken with you to another jurisdiction. So Bitcoin is much more flexible in this way. Plus, real estate usually comes with property taxes, ongoing maintenance costs, etc. And as a result, big, uh, as a result, real estate is always leaking economic energy, as Michael Saylor likes to say. Bitcoin does not. And that's why I continue to hold all of my Bitcoin and keep buying more. I'm not worried about Satoshi returning. It would be a very depressing day if he ever did. But I just want to say thank you, Satoshi, for your gift to humanity for creating this protocol. And thank you, Satoshi, for disappearing and being so egoless, not interested in riches, not interested in Lambo, but a pure intellectual who gave this gift to the world and then disappeared. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.